The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily represent those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting group. If you or anyone you know might be interested in making a television show, please call 260-421-1250. Access Fort Wayne is a department of the Allen County Public Library. From, from my home state, from Indiana, Fort Wayne, Indiana. There he is, the host of the Uncle Ducky show, Uncle Ducky. There he is. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from his farmhouse in Allen County, Indiana, the host of the Uncle Ducky Show, the one, the only, Uncle Ducky. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. And welcome to our farmhouse in Allen County, Indiana. Wait a minute, where's Mrs. McHenry, Mr. McHenry? Well, Uncle Ducky. Mouth up and down. She is, uh, <laughs> she, excuse me, this weekend's the annual Spring Farmer's Bake in Allen County. And she up and down. is uh, <laughs> up and with down. with Mrs. Forrester at it. She couldn't really? be here tonight. Oh, there's Betty Forrester. So she's at the annual Spring Bake Sale? That's right, at the annual spring bake sale, Allen County. Oh, good. Well, that's fine. And hey. thank you for coming. Are you going to sleep now? <laughs> no. Hey, Sorry. hey, Dr. Panzini, Ducky. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, Panzini. Hey, Dr. Ducky, how you doing? Good, Panzini. Hey, hey you yeah. might, might want your hat on. Okay. Oh, a hat? A hat? hat? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Here comes my hat. All righty now. Hey, that looks pretty, that's better. How's that look? Oh, that looks pretty, pretty good, dapper. Good, good. I think it's pretty dapper. Dapper, good. <laughs> hey, uh, I want you to know that uh, now that your hat's on, I want to tell you about a word called chrysalis. I've never heard of it. Yeah, well, you never heard of it? No. Well, I'll tell you later uh, what it what it means and everything, but uh, we should probably do something about the clock and everything right now because uh, we're kind of running along here. We're running long. Okay, I wonder who's going to set the clock. Sharon? Hello. Hello, everybody. This is Grace. Uncle Ducky, this is Grace. And she's going to set the clock at 9 p.m. 9 p.m. Your clock. Right okay, there. Okay, great. All right. Ducky, you mean doing the tell time. Yeah. Right. Come on. Right. Good one. Thank you, Grace. I appreciate that very much. And thank you, Grace, for okay. setting the time properly. You yes. want to hear a butterfly joke, Grace? Grace, you want to hear a butterfly joke? Okay. <clears throat> why didn't the butterfly go to the dance? I don't know. Why did the butterfly? Why didn't the butterfly? Because it was a mothball. Oh, <laughs> I didn't go straight down. Okay. And okay. what do you call a cheap butterfly? I don't know. What do you call a cheap butterfly? A margarine fly. Margarine fly. Thank you. Thank you for being on the show, Grace. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Oops. Okay. 
And now this public service announcement from the Botanical Conservatory about our butterfly exhibition. Butterfly exhibit. Um, this is, I think, our 19th year with that. Um, first year was in 2003. Um, we did not have it in 2020 due to the pandemic. Uh, but we have exotic butterflies in there. So none of them are native to Indiana. They are not native to North America. Uh, they are from tropical parts of the world, so places like Africa, Asia, and Central so South sweet. America. And so we are permitted to have them in two of their four um, stages of their life cycle. So we get them as chrysalids. They go into our hatching lab. Um, then they emerge as the adult butterfly. Once they are ready to fly, then they are put into the exhibit. So we have the chrysalids and then the, the adult butterflies. They eat nectar. So that's kind of like a sweet liquid. Um, and that's what they're fed. So um, we have a certain, we kind of mix that up with a certain percentage of sugar and then water. And uh, that's what they feed on. It gives them the energy that they need. <laughs> so you can learn all about butterflies and all of their um, stages of their life cycle by going visiting the Allen County Public Library, the main campus as well as the other branches. Um, they have an array and a wonderful selection of butterfly books. Okay, thank you very much. And Norm, thank you for going with me to the uh, conservatory to do that public service announcement. Now we have a special guest on our show. His name is Boston Strong. Ding right? dong. No, oh, dang. Ding dong. <laughs> okay. And Boston works with me at the YMCA, and he's an expert on moths and butterflies. Okay? And he brought this place to the YMCA, and he's going to look at the monitor and describe. There's one, of, that's the description of one of his displays. There you go. And there's the display. Okay? Yes. And so we're going to have three pictures that he took, and he will describe what they are. So, Pat, you need to get to that mic. Okay. Right? Here we go. That name is a blue sunset morpho. That butterfly is massive. The size is eight inches. It's massive. And it lives in the forest in Amazon in Brazil. Yeah, second one. That name is a, a zebra butterfly, swallowtail, and it has Five years, nobody's seen it. It was really so rare that no one's seen it in any kind of state, and it was so frustrating in Indiana. Nobody's seen it for five years. And it eats, uh, like, fruit trees and pawpaw trees. It's not rare to find it here in Indiana, but it is rare to find it everywhere else. That name is a Sermaeus. I had to practice that name. That was hard. But that's found, that moth is really wide known in Brazil. And that moth eats wild, oh, it's a, it's, it's, it's a cousin of a, tr fam a f really famous tree. And it has a really, really long tail. And bats get confused with it because it's so long and fluttery that the bats accidentally grab things without it actually grabbing the tail, and that's how it protects itself. Wow. Okay. Tell him thank you for being on our show. <laughs> thank you, Pat. That was good. That was really good. Mr. McHenry. Hey, Uncle Ducky. Yes. Hey, we got a fella here named Percy. He wants to remind you of something. Okay. What will he be? Ding dong. Ding dong. Ding dong. <laughs> Percy. Hi, Percy. How you doing? Good. Good. Yeah. The summer 
summer's almost here. Yes. They're in their and and it's almost here. And maybe he he could put on the YMCA PSA about their Trail Buddies program. Okay, thank you. That yes, that was good. Wasn't yeah. that great, Ponzini? I think that was fantastic. I think yeah. you did a great job of uh, introducing that. Right. That video. Thank you, Percy, for that. Yes. Yes. So this is this is um, what the YMCA does provide for the community. So say you uh, can't ride a bike from uh, you know uh, your ambulatory uh, issues and this and that. Well, the YMCA has a program where someone will ride a bike and. Just, and you'll see on the PSA that you still get to do a nice bike ride at Jorgensen, where uh, this lady's from. It's a mile and 2.5, and maybe even then you can see butterflies. So, Norm, if you're ready, let's roll that. Uncle Ducky at the Skyline YMCA on Harrison Street. As some of you might know, I actually work at the YMCA and teach. This Trail Buddies segment is a good example of our mission at the YMCA. And our mission is to put Christian principles into practice through programs that build healthy spirit, mind, body for all. And this is an example, our Trail Buddies uh, segment. Hi everybody, I'm Shannon Norris with the YMCA's Trail Buddies program. At Trail Buddies, we encourage people, everybody, to get out and enjoy the outdoors. So persons with mobility issues might have problems getting outside and enjoying our beautiful trails. The Trail Buddies program with our specially designed bike lets you do that. So if you or somebody you know have mobility issues, go to the YMCA website and check out how to sign up for a ride, or if you'd like to volunteer, you can check that out too. I encourage everybody to enjoy the Trail Buddies program at the Jorgensen YMCA. Very nice. Thank you very much. Hey, uh, Dr. Ducky. Yes, hey, Ponzini. What do you think? Uh, could I read the definition and the and the explain what transformation is uh, with having to do with the chrysalis? Yes, that would be great. Seeing as you've never heard of it before, I better tell you. Heard of it? Yeah. You know where I'm from, right? Heard, yeah, from the Bronx. From the Bronx, it was it was uh, tough tough to, to grow up there, but I did a lot of reading. You know, yes. Brought myself uh, over here. Uh, a chrysalis is a a caterpillar. It hangs upside down from a leaf or a twig. Yes. And it spins a silk around itself like a protective uh, like a protective casing, kind of like Tupperware. Right? Okay. And then it comes out. Uh, as a beautiful flutterby, I, I mean a butterfly. <laughs> it takes about, uh, I don't know, five to 15 days or so to happen, yeah. Yes. That's a chrysalis. Okay. Don't get that confused with the, like a cocoon or something like that, because that's, like that's like a moth. I see, so, uh, a okay. A chrysalis is a, is a caterpillar to a, to a butterfly. Yeah, that's okay. it. Okay. So what we have is, we have a, a picture from a second grade class at St. Peter, uh, excuse me, not that St. Peter, St. Vincent's Elementary School. Okay. Having to do with the chrysalis. Yes. That pic there it is. And it says that uh, this has already hatched this, this, in this picture here. Right, yes. And we'll, yeah, we'll show that from uh, St. There, yeah, St. Vincent's uh, Elementary School, yeah. their second grade class. That was one of their projects. And lo and behold, before the show, it actually, they released the uh, butterflies to the wild. Yeah, and so we have a really special guest. Can I introduce that guest now? Yes, for sure. Uh, this is Ava Parr, and she's going to talk about that. Okay. Now, we'll, where will you get the books from? The farm? So the farmhand's going to give you the book. Do you want me to grab the books from? There's one, Ava. There's another one, Ava. I'm gonna hold it so you can do a close up on it. There you there it go. Is. Okay, and then one more book. You wanna zoom in? There you go. Okay, Ava. If you wanna learn more about butterflies, go to your local library and check out books like these. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Ava, for being on our show. Thank you very much. And in fact, Ava is in that class that took the chrysalis 
and then it became Butterfly from the elementary school, St. Vincent's. Wow, that was great. Doorbell. Oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah, that's our manager. <laughs> Back. Where are you going? <laughs> hey, Jeff. <laughs> no. Wait, what, what are you doing? Uh, turn it around. Thank you. Hey, Jeff. Do you call a... What do you call a stick of butter with wings? I don't know. What? A butterfly. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yes, Where's that's our good. drum roller? Right. He's gone. Oh, brother. oh, thank you. Hey, I got a question for you, Jeff. Watch that. I don't think it's now noob. <laughs> New help in hand. Why was the butterfly not invited to the dance? I don't know why. I think Thorn the Lathody knows this. He stole the joke. It was a mothball. <laughs> you can turn it around there. Hey, Jeff, you're not on camera. There he goes. <laughs> this is getting all crazy. Right. Lynn Butterfly... Okay, I got a question for you. Why that? When butterflies get nervous, do they feel people in their stomachs? <laughs> uh, I don't know that. All right, all right. So you want to know something? Watch that. My son asked, Dad, every time a girl, I ask a girl out, I always get butterflies in my stomach. What should I do? Well, uh, well, you know what I did? What'd you do? I gently put my arm around him and replied, That's easy, son. Stop eating caterpillars! <laughs> and that's all to the night, folks. Oh, and by the way, meet our new manager, Jeff Dunham. Hi, you boys and girls, I'm back. <laughs> it's been a long time. <laughs> thank you for being on our show. No problem. And thank you for helping us out. <laughs> right? Ducky, Ducky. Oh, Ducky. yeah. Yes, my conscience. What's that? Well, uh, it was nice of you to have Benny Feifel on a recent show playing his vent violin yes thank you and benny realizes it'll take a lot of perseverance that's a big word perseverance to become proficient on that instrument and uh, so he wants to come out and read a psa about not giving up to inspire okay. your audience and my conscious uh, you mentioned that maybe i misspelled the word perseverance in the script well i just wasn't sure that you understood such a big word like that okay. thank you <laughs> All right. And, oh, and hey, Ponzini, he yes. Yeah, I think he's at the door. Here's uh, to tell more about Perseverance. He is Benny! Benny. Yeah. yeah! Here you go, Benny. There you go. Right up to that microphone. There you go, there you go, there you go. Don't quit trying. If you quit now, you'll end up right back where you first began. And when you first began, you were desperate to be right where you are now. Keep going. Yeah, that's good advice. And Betty, Becky, yeah. Becky, Becky, did you know that there are a lot of butterflies that are attracted to flowers? Oh, what kind of flowers are those, my conscience? Well, there would be uh, milkweed. Milkweed, yes. And zinnias. Zanias? And yes. black-eyed Susans. Black-eyed Susans. How did you know that? Uh, because I have a script that says that. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> yes, and Zanias. Yeah, I think, uh, I think it's taken a lot of perseverance to just get through this show. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> oh, that's it, okay. All right, good. So McHenry has to bring out a chair, and he's not here. So oh. Lee, who I work with, 
the YMCA is going to play a song, and he would like to have everyone join in. If they want to come out and sing the song, it's a railroad song. It's a group participation. Group participation. So come on out, everyone, if you want to sing it. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. She'll, She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming around the mountain. She'll be coming around the mountain. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. She'll be driving six white horses when she comes. She'll be driving six white horses when she comes. She'll be driving six white horses. Driving six white horses. She'll be driving six white horses when she comes. Oh, we'll all go out to meet her when she comes. We'll all go out to meet her when she comes. We'll all go out to meet her when she comes. We'll all go out to meet her. We'll all go out to meet her when she comes. She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. She'll be, She'll be coming, coming around the mountain. mountain. She'll be coming around the mountain. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you Lee, for being on our show. So, Ava, I want to ask you something. Can you describe what you guys did at St. Vincent's Elementary School? We took some... We had some caterpillars in a bucket, and um, there was like five in three buckets, and then we waited for a few weeks for them to get in their chrysalis, and then once they're all in their chrysalis, we put them in like a cage, and we wait for like about two weeks, and then they hatched as a butterfly, and then we waited for a per perfect day to um, release them. Wow, yeah. Well, thank you very much for being on our show. I appreciate that very much. Do you want to talk to Mr. McHenry? Mr. McHenry, do you want to ask uh, Ava something? Well, how, how long do butterflies, butterflies live for? They live for about... Um, four weeks. And can they live in the winter time too, or do they fly south for the winter? They fly south for the winter. Oh, okay, thank you, I didn't know that. Well, thank you very much again for being on our show. That was unexpected, yes, a little extra. You. Yes, okay, good. Thank you, Ava. So this time of the year is uh, Indianapolis 500 time. And we have one of our characters is Todd Allen, and he went down to the Indianapolis 500. And this is a videotape that he took while he was there. The Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and Todd Allen, Todd Allen will have reports from here. <laughs> well, I've seen I, that guy I, somewhere I before. You, need a, you definitely need a pass to be in here. You need some kind of credentials, media credentials or something. To, I can show you my driver's license. Uh, I need, if you don't have any credentials, I need you to step out of the pits. Step out of the pits? Yeah. Okay. Excuse me, let me. We're now going to step out of the pits <laughs> and uh, view the action from on that side of the fence. This is Todd Allen reporting from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. We're now on the other side of the fence, but I'm sure there's a lot of interesting interviews that we can conduct on this side. This is Todd Allen. This is Todd Allen on this side of the fence. Ladies and gentlemen, Axel Rose. How you guys doing? I'm gonna actually hey, Axel, but I know you're not filming this, but uh, we love Indy. Andy? Indy 500. Oh, Indy, Indy 500, yeah. Are you in the uh, tug of war contest, sir? Yes, I'm getting ready to go get in it right now. I'm gonna kick some ass in it. Okay, we can't say ass. Could you rephrase that? Good luck in this event. Thank you very much. I hope much. you don't get your outfit all muddy. Oh, I'm sure I won't. Okay, thank you. How are you doing so far? Pretty good. You said 
she's doing pretty good so far in this tug of war contest. Pardon me, madam? What's your name? Todd Allen. And what, what are you for? I'm rooting for Bill Elliott, but he's a sedan racer. <laughs> You're weird. Wow, thank you, Todd Allen, for that report from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And today's May the 23rd, and on the 29th, this Sunday, uh, is the Indianapolis 500. Well, that's all the time we have on tonight's show, and please remember, be kind to one another, and we'll see you next time. Good night, everybody. Production facilities provided by Access Fort Wayne. Learn more under the Explore tab at acpl.info.